Hey, what's up everybody? Roger Aladdin Daltrey is back here with another fantastic music vlog for you. It's been a while now since I've done a few music reviews because I've been busy doing other stuff like uploading original songs because I'm soon going to become a singer-songwriter. So that's why I didn't really have the time to do more of these videos for you. But I kind of figured I would go back to doing a few of these for a while. So anyway, today I am doing you an artist that I of whose albums I actually bought this year. So I kind of figured it would be nice to get some of them out of the way. The artist that I am talking about is Steely Dan. Now, recently I've been madly obsessed with Steely Dan's music and Donald Fagan has now become one of my music heroes. So he's up there with Paul Stanley, Booker C. Jones, Bob Dylan, Phil Collins, David Bowie, Davy Jones, Paul Williams, from Temptations now, uh, Eric Bloom, John Lees, Brian Ferry, Lou Graham, Ian Curtis, Noel Gallagher, sorry Liam, uh, John Kay from Steppenwolf, Sly Stone, Billy Joe Armstrong, uh, Joey Ramone, Michael Hutchins, Francis Rossi, Phil Linnett, Geddy Lee, Billy Gibbons, Paul Rogers, Mark Knopfler, Sting, David Lee Roth, John Fogarty, Cat Stevens, Dave Grohl, Matt Bellamy, and then of course Aladdin from AHSW. And then Obviously, the main female heroes we know is Jasmine, but for real people, Perry Edwards, obviously. And then you'll, you might hear a few more female heroes as well in this video when I do music associations. So, that's, so they're all the heroes, and Donald Fagan has now fit in there perfectly. And on June 28, 2019, which is my birthday, my 21st birthday actually, I'm going to do you an unboxing video for the Donald Fagan Cheap Xmas box set. So stay tuned for that video. So, let's get started on the albums. So, released in 1972, this is their debut album, Can't Buy a Thrill. And here's the back. And this is an excellent debut album, one of my favourite debut albums of all time. And when you hear in other videos, I say this is one of the best debut albums. So the other debut records from 1972 for me include the debut albums of Blue Oyster Cult, Roxy Music and the Eagles, and then J.J. Kale, naturally. Because speaking of which, the track on here, Midnight Cruiser, could be like saying, if you take out Cruiser, we can get After Midnight, which is a song titled by J.J. Kale on that naturally record. And then Mr. Eric Clapton covered it two years earlier on his 1970 debut album. And then we can also have something like Lady Midnight by Leonard Cohen on 1969 Songs from a Room, which is 50 this year, by the way. And then we can have Midnight Drug by uh, Barky James Harvest, on 1983's Ring of Changes. So that's with Midnight Cruiser. And I, I of course love the track Do It Again, because it's amazing. The funny thing about Do It Again is that when I first heard it, it was very familiar, like the the music in that is, was very familiar, but I didn't know it was CD Dan. And I found it very amazing, that music. And I said, wow, this is really good. I'm gonna buy that. And then it was CD Dan. And then with Do It on its own, it's a song titled by The Doors. And it comes off the 50th anniversary of their 1969 record, The Soft Parade, which was around the same time when Jim Morrison got arrested in Miami, Florida for indecent exposure. Which is which was a bit weird. And then with It on its own, it's a song titled by Genesis, from the 1974 record, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And then It on a, and then with It at the very end of something, we can have Any Way You Slice It by Kiss on 1985's Asylum, and then we can get Any Way You Wanted by Kiss, but the Dave Clark 5 cover on Alive 2, and then also by Journey, from 1980 album Departure. And then maybe It's Only Rock and Roll But I Like It by the Rolling Stones, on the 1974 record of the same name, which is awesome. And then Do It Again is also mentioned in the Beatles track Hey Bulldog on the Yellow Submarine soundtrack, which is also 50, which is cool. And yeah, Do It Again is just a classic. Dirty Work is really good too, and Work on Its Own is a song titled by Leo Sayre from a 1979 record here. And then we can have The Works by Queen from 1984, celebrating 35 this year. And then Dirty Work is also a song titled by The Rolling Stones from a 1986 album, same name, and also an episode title on the Thomas Tank Engine show, which is cool. And the music on Kings here 
it's very similar to like an Elton John kind of piano playing. Like the riff is very Elton John-esque, which I think is awesome. And with Kings, we could have something like A Farewell to Kings, which is a song titled by Rush from 1977, record of same name. And then we can get Early Roman Kings by Bob Dylan on 2012's Tempest, which is a really cool album and a good song too. I like, of course, the music to Only a Fool Would Say That, which I think is an awesome melody to it. Only a Fool could be nearly like saying Only a Pawn in Their Game by Bob Dylan from the 55th anniversary edition of The Times They Are Changing. And, with, and, and maybe Only a Hobo by Bob Dylan as well, which was an outtake, and covered by Rod Stewart from 1970's Gasoline Alley, and then perhaps Only a Boy by Rod Stewart if you look at Only a Fool and change it to Only a Boy from 1981's Night I'm Yours which I think is cool. So yeah, I like that song. But I like, of course, Reading in the Years. Reading in the Years is an amazing song and a great riff as well. It actually gives me a bit of a vibe to the Eagles nearly, because it has a bit of Eagles kind of guitar playing in it. So I think Steely Dan here, we're trying to rip off the Eagles in some ways, with the guitar playing anyway. And then Fire in the Hole is pretty good too, and Fire on its own are song titles by both Bruce Springsteen, which he covered live, and then by U2 on 1981's October. And then with In The Hole, we could have something like Ace In The Hole by Paul Simon from 1980's One Trick Pony, and by, and then we could get Ace In The Hole by Humble Pie from 1972 Smokin', which came out in the same year as this album actually, which is cool. Brooklyn is pretty fine too, and that's where Peter Chris was from because of his thick Brooklyn accent. And then the funny thing about Change of the Guard is that, I, well, first of all, I like the music in that, and it's like saying Changing of the Guards, which is a song titled by Bob Dylan from the 1978 album Street Legal. One of the best tracks on that whole album. Not the best track. That would be Where Are You Tonight During Your Dark Heat, which I think is a good song. And then it finishes with Turn That Heartbeat Over Again, which is cool. Heartbeat on its own are song titles by, by both Buddy Holly, and then, I forget who had it first, but it featured a Nicole Scherzinger as a uh, guest artist. And she's another female hero to me, along with Perry Edwards, obviously. And then we can have Heartbeat City by The Cars from 1984, record of the same name. 35 this year, wow. And then we turn that heartbeat over again. Turn and again are also the first and last words of the Genesis song, Turn It On Again, from the 1980 album Duke, which I think is a cool coincidence. So yeah. Fantastic debut album. Love this. And this is ranked on Rowan Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. And the title, Can't Buy a Trill, could be like saying Can't Buy Me Love by the Beatles from the Hard Day's Night album. And also, Can't Buy a Trill is mentioned in Bob Dylan's It Takes Off the Laugh, Takes a Train to Cry, which is on Highway 61 Revisited, and then covered by Denny Freeman on 2012's Digging on Dylan, and also by Stills, Cooper and, Broom and Bloomfield. Right, their second album, 1973, Countdown to Ecstasy. And I don't really like this album as much as Can't Buy a Trail, but it's still a fine album overall. I like the drums on Bod His... Bon His Attava. I don't know how you pronounce that. Somebody correct me in the comment box below. But the one track I love the most on here is Razor Boy. And with Razor Boy, it could be like saying The Razor's Edge, which is an album titled by ACDC, which signaled their comeback after three commercial disappointment records of the 80s. And then Boy on its own is an album titled by U2, which again for me is second only to Phil Collins' Space Value as the greatest 80s debut album of all time. And then Boy is also a song titled by Little Mix, which is on the 2013 album Salute. And then we can also get About the Boy by Little Mix on the same record as well. Because again, Salute is a pretty good album, but it's not as good as DNA. And we can get Mad About the Boy by Status Quo from 1976's Blue For You. And maybe Pretty Boy Floyd by Bob Dylan for a Woody Guthrie tribute album. That's pretty cool. The, the Boston rag is fine. Boston is the name of a band as well, and a state in New and a state in America. And then it's also the name of Boston's debut album as well. And then with Rag in the title, we can have something like Rag Rag Mama Rag, which is by the band from the 50th anniversary of the Brown album, which is cool. Your Gold Teeth I kind of like on this album as well. And Gold could be like saying Heart of Gold by Neil Young from 1972's Harvest, or even Man with a Heart of Gold, which is my original song, which I think is pretty fine. 
And then with teeth in the title, it'd be like saying Pulling Teeth, which is a song titled by Green Day from the 25th anniversary of 1994's Ducky. And then also by Metallica from the 1983 album Kill Em All, which again, I'd given up on Metallica due to Lou Reed collaboration, but it doesn't mean I don't love some of their music. So yeah, Showbiz Kids is fine. And Showbiz is the name of an album titled by Muse, which is 20 this year. And then with Kids, it could be like saying The Kids, which is a song titled by Lou Reed from 1973's Berlin. And we can have maybe The Kids Are Alright, which is a song titled by AHSW from the 1965 record My Generation, which then Little Mix could have used for 2012's DNA, which is a cool record. And then My Old School is pretty fine too. Oh, with My Old, we like saying My Old Man by both Joni Mitchell from 1971's Blue and by Lou Reed in 1980's Growing Up in Public. And then Old, we can have Old Man by Neil Young on Harvest and then ZZ Top on the debut record ZZ Top's first album. And what I like most in Pearl of the Quarter is that the music is a bit similar to Lou Reed's Coney Island Baby album. Like some of the songs have a bit of a similar vibe to that. Pearl on its own is an album titled by Janis Joplin, which was released posthumously after she passed away, which was three days after Aerosmith was formed. And then Pearl, we have Pearl Jam, which is the name of a classic grunge band. And then for King of the World, it's good too. It could be like saying King of the Mountain, which is a song titled by Kiss from 1985's Asylum. And then we could have maybe King of the Perfect World, maybe. Perfect World, which is a song titled by both Talking Heads from 1985's Little Creatures, and then by Aladdin on 1992's Rocks in the Head, which came out in the same year as the movie. And now the live-action remake movie is out as well. And the 25th anniversary of Return of Jafar, and even my favourite TV show of all time, turning 25 this year. So yeah, there's a lot going on in, in the Aladdin world this year. So, and then maybe we're King of the World, it could be like saying Way of the World, which is a song titled by both Genesis, on 1991's We Can't Dance, and then by Aladdin on his 1973 self-titled album, which again, the greatest 70s debut album of all time. And then hopefully next year in 2020, when we get Lil Mix's 6 to the record, and if the girls want to do solo careers, Perry could do her debut solo album, and then Leanne Pinnock could do her third solo album as well, if she wanted to do it. So yeah, cool record, but not as good as Can't Buy a Trill. But this next album is even better. And it's 45 this year, by the way. It's 1974's Pretzel Logic. I mean, look at that album cover. You can see that you can price, that they're all in prices. Like, you can get 15 cents for a hot pretzel, 25 for a roasted peanut, and then 35 for roasted chestnuts, which is cool. Then here's the back. This, of course, has the hit single, Ricky Don't Lose That Number. And I find the chorus in that just a tiny bit annoying in that, but it's still a good song. Don't Lose That Number could be like saying Don't Lose My Number, which is a song titled by Phil Collins from 1985's No Jacket Required, which is cool. Night by Night is pretty good too, and it could be like saying Night After Night by Bob Dylan from the Down the Groove sessions, which I think is cool. And then with Night at the end, we can have, well, Night on its own is a song titled by Bruce Springsteen on 1975's Born to Run. And then we can have maybe Teeth in the Night at the end by both the Rolling Stones on 1997's Bridge to Babylon, and by Kiss on 1987's Crazy Nights, which is cool. Then the music in any major dude will tell you, it's a bit similar to uh, Bad Company's Feel Like Making Love from 1975's Straight Shooter, and now the new Bad Company box set is coming out, but I have all the six albums individually, so I don't need to do an unboxing video for them, but I might review the albums for you in a future video, which is cool. And then with Tell You, it could be like saying Tell Me, which are both by Bob Dylan, from the Infidel Sessions and by the Rolling Stones on 55th anniversary of their debut album this year. And maybe You Tell Me by Tom Payne and the Heartbreakers from Damn Torpedoes, which is 40 this year, which is cool. Barrytown is pretty good too. East St. Louis to the low is pretty good. Parker's Band is pretty good too. And Parker's Band could be like saying We're an American Band by Grand Funk Railroad on the 1973 record of the same name. And I might actually do the box set of Grand Funk Railroads Volume 2 when I get it, if I do get it, so stay tuned for that video. Then with True With Buzz, it could be like saying something like uh, True With Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. Now Toy Story 4 just came out today. And then it could be like saying Love Buzz, which is a song titled by Nirvana from the 30th anniversary of the album Bleach, which is cool. Pretzel Logic's title track is okay. 
with a gun I kind of like as well. And it could be like saying, of course, Love Gun, which is a song titled by Kiss on the 1977 record of the same name. And we can have Cleaning My Gun by Mark Knopfler from 2009's 10th anniversary of Get Lucky. And the music in With a Gun is a bit similar to John Lennon's Working Class Hero from 1970's Pacific Ono Band and then covered by Tin Machine for their 30th anniversary debut album this year, which features, of course, David Bowie, in case people don't know. Then Charlie Freak is pretty good too. Freak on its own is a song titled by Kiss on 2012's Monster. And then with Charlie Freak, it'd be like saying Charlie's Girl by um, Lou Reed on 1976's Coney Island Baby. And then it finishes with Monkey in Your Soul. With Monkey, it could be like saying Shock the Monkey by Peter Gabriel on 1982's Security, which is Peter Gabriel 4. And perhaps uh, Pineapple and the Monkey by The Faces from 1970's First Step. And then with In Your Soul, it could be like saying In Your Mind, which are song titles by both Brian Ferry on the 1977 album Same Name and by Johnny Cash from Dead Man Walking soundtrack. And then with Soul at the very end, we can have like Rubber Soul by The Beatles. And then Soul, which begin the first two words, the first word of two Booker T and the MG songs, and those are Soul Dressing from the 1965 album Same Name, and by and then Soul Limbo on 1968, which is cool. So yeah, this is a cool album. This is ranked on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time also, which is cool. But again, the best of the first three is definitely Can't Buy a Thrill. So that's that. And then the lineup suddenly fell apart when Jeff Skunk Baxter, who played on... Gene Simmons' 1978 solo Kiss album, drummer Jim Hodder, and guitar player Denny Diaz, they all left the band, but some of them did actually be guest musicians on these next few albums, and that's why now it only leaves Donald Fagan and Walter Becker as the only members, and they were the only two members to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when Steve Dan got inducted. And to me, they're kind of like, it's kind of like the 70s version of Simon and Garfunkel in some ways. So, therefore, we're now going to go on to the first album as the two of them, and boy, this is a great album. It's 1975's Katie Lied. I mean, what an album this is. And I like the Mantis on the front as well. So I like the track Black Friday, that's a really good song. Friday on its own is a song titled by J.J. Cale from the 1979 album Five. And then we can have something like Get Him Out by Friday by Genesis from 1972's Foxtrot. And then with Black in the title, we can have something like Black Blade by Blue Oyster Cult on 1980's Coltisaurus Erectus. And then maybe Woman in Black by Foreigner on 1981's Forks. The opening bit in Black Friday with the do 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 is a bit like the Foreigner track Woman in Black with that kind of riff, which I kind of like. I like Bad Sneakers too, and Bad on its own is a song titled by Boat U2 on 1984's 35th anniversary of The Unforgettable Fire and by Michael Jackson on 1987 album of the same name. And then we can have something like Bad Reputation by Tin Lizzy from 1977 album of the same name. And then also by Joan Jett, which was in the first Shrek movie. Because again, Shrek is the man on the bass, Wallace is the man on the drums, Homer is the man on guitar, and then Aladdin is the man on vocals and of everything, which is insane. And then if you want to do a female equivalent, we can have Leanne Pinnock playing lead bass, Jesse Nelson playing lead drums, Jay Turrell playing lead guitar, and Perry Edwards' vocals and of everything. It's insane it, when it comes to females, which is cool. So I like the song Bad Sneakers. Rose Darling is quite good too. Darling could be like saying Oh Darling by the Beatles from the Abbey Road album, which is 50 this year. And then we can have When I Think About You Pretty Darling, which is the title of my original song at the very end. And then with Rose, we can have something like Black Rose or Rock Legend by Tin Lizzy, which is 40 this year. And then of course, we have Red Rose Speedway by Paul McCartney from 73, which that album in Wild Life got its archive collection reissues. And that same year, McCartney released Band on the Run, which is pretty cool. But the best track on here by far is Daddy Don't Live in That New York City No More. The music is so powerful in that. And with New York City, it could be like saying New York City Serenade by Bruce Springsteen from The Wild, The Innocent and The E Street Shuffle. And then with New York in title, they are song titles by both Lou Reed, from 1989's New York, which is of the same name, which is totally this year, and by U2, from a 2000 album, All That You Can't Leave Behind. And then we can have Talk in New York by Bob Dylan, from the debut album. And then New York Groove by Ace Frehley, from his 70 Solo Kiss album, and even Back in New York City by Genesis, from The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, which is really cool. 
And then, no more in the title is a song titled by Neil Young from Freedom, which is 30 this year also. And then we can have No More, No More by Aerosmith from Toys in the Attic, which is pretty cool. The title, Daddy Don't Live That New York City No More, is a bit of a similar long title of Daddy's, Daddy's Gotta Pay For Your Crashed Car by U2 from 1993's Zoo Ropa. But yeah, if you haven't heard the song Daddy Don't Live That New York City No More, you, you need to check it out because it's an amazing song. Dr. Vu is pretty good too, and it could be like saying Dr. Robert, which is a song titled by the Beatles from the 1966 album Revolver. And then we can have Call the Doctor by J.J. Cale from Naturally, and then Doctor Doctor by Barclay James Harvest from 1981's Turn Up a Tide, which is cool. Everyone's Gone to the Movies is a pretty nice song too. With the movie, it's a song titled by Aerosmith on 1987's Permanent Vacation. And then we can have Can't Wait to See the Movie by Aladdin from 1987, which at the time was going to be one of his final albums due to the Disney Renaissance beginning with Little Mermaid, which is 30 this year, which is awesome. Your Goal Teat 2 is kind of like the uh, one on Countdown to Ecstasy with a 2 in the title there. So yeah, that one. Chain Lightning is good too, and Chain Lightning is also a song titled by Rush from the 1989 record Presto, which is 30 this year. And then Lightning on its own is a song titled by Little Mix from 2015's Get Weird, which is my least favorite from the album because it's the longest track on the album. But I like the song in general as much as I love Little Mix as well. And then, with Lightning, we can have Thunder and Lightning by Boat, Phil Collins, on 1981's Face Value, which again, best 80s debut album of all time. And then by Tim Lizzy on the 1970, uh, 1983 record of the same name. And then with Chain, we can have Ball and Chain by uh, Barty James Harvest on 1971's Once Again. And maybe Chains by The Beatles from 1963's Please Please Me. And then we have Any World That I'm Welcome To. I mentioned world from Perfect World already, but we can have Any Other World by Mika from 2007's Life in Cartoon Motion. And that whole album is featured on the early roots of the AHSW and Little Mix cover versions 1968-1978, which was recorded during the Tommy sessions, and then Little Mix could have used that for the uh, Glory Days album, which is cool. And then Throwback to Little Ones is pretty fine too. So yeah, great album this is. If you haven't heard this, you need to check this out. This is one of the more underrated albums in my opinion. But I love this one so much. And now we actually get a, another great Steve Dan record too. It's 1976, The Royal Scam. And the album cover to me is a bit similar to, the two, of course, Genesis selling England by the pound with someone lying on the bench, which is pretty cool. And I like the opening track, track Kid Charles Magny, which has the cool do 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 do. Kind of is a bit similar to the uh, Genesis Follow You, Follow Me with the don't, 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 don't. So they kind of ripped it off from that, but I'm not so sure. But I think it's good. And I like, of course, uh, the Caves of Alta Maria. And the music in that is very similar to Bob Dylan's Masters of War with the uh, do. I'll actually get my guitar for you. I'll play them back to back. You'll be the judge. So this is the uh, Bob Dylan one where it goes like this. So it goes like. <laughs> Whereas in the Cave of Altamers, it goes more like... <laughs> to me, they sound so similar to each other. Those songs. But I like the song. <laughs> Don't Take Me Alive is fun too. And Take Me on its own are song titles by both Grand Funk Railroad on 1976's Born to Die and by Kiss on 1976's Rock and Roll Over. And then with Take Me, we can have Take Me to the Mardi Gras by Paul Simon on 73's There Goes Rhyme and Simon. And then we can have Take Me to the River by Al Green and covered by Boat, Brian Ferry and Talking Heads from both records 1978. So those are Bright Strip Bear by Brian Ferry and then More Songs About Billions and Food by Talking Heads. So yeah, and then with Alive in the title, it's the name of the uh, live albums by Kiss. And then with Don't, it's the song title by Elvis. And then other song titles with Don't and type with which I'm not going to reference because it'll be here all day, but just to give you an idea. Sign In Stranger is quite good as well. Stranger is an album title by Billy Joel, from in, which was from 77. And then we can have something like Stranger to Stranger by Paul Simon from the 19... from 2016, which is cool. And then The Fez is quite good too. Fez is like uh, the name of a hat, which is the type of hat that, that of course, Abu and Aladdin wear in the, in the TV shows and movies, which I like. Green Earrings is cool with the donk 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 donk. I like the keyboard playing by Donald Fagan in that. Green Earrings could be like saying Green Onions, which is by Booker T and the MGs from the 62 album, same name, 
which is pretty cool. Hating Divorce is pretty good, but I love everything you did even more because of the C-sharp minor chord in it, because I love it so much. And then, and then the title track, The Royal Scam, is good too. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I love this album. But this now is my favourite CD Dan record of all time. Asia. I mean, what an album this is. This is just a masterpiece of a record. But I mean, Black Cow. Awesome opening track. And it'd be like saying Poor Cow, which are song titles by both uh, Tanita Tikram on 1988's Ancient Heart and by Donovan as well. The title track Asia is pretty nice too, and Asia is also the name of a band as well, featuring Carl Palmer and Steve Howe from Yes. Carl Palmer from ELP, of course, which is pretty cool. I like Deacon Blues as well, and it's the name of a band as well, and Deacon is also the surname of Queen bass player John Deacon, who left the band in 1997 due to Freddie Mercury's death, as he was upset the most. And I understand why, because I was kind of pleased that he left, because... When Freddie Mercury died, we all should have, all those people should have just quit their music careers, I think. Because you can't replace Freddie Mercury, no way. Peg is a pretty good song as well. Home at Last is quite good. Home at Last could be like saying Free at Last, which is an album titled by Free. And it's mentioned in U2's Pride in the Name of Love, which is on both The Unforgettable Fire and Rattling Home. And then Home, at the very end, could be like saying Going Home, which are song titles by... Leo Sayre on 1990's Cool Touch, Leonard Cohen on 2012's Old Ideas, and by the Rolling Stones on 1966's Aftermath. And also, we can have Closer to Home by Grand Funk Railroad from 1970, which is cool. I Got the News is a pretty good song too, and then Josie is awesome as well. I think it's a cool way to end that record. There's only seven songs in the album because the title track Asia is so long. So yeah, what a great album this is. You have to hear this album. If you haven't heard it, you need to check it out. This is also ranked on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time too. And then the final Steely Dan record I have to show you here is the 1980 record, Gaucho. And I like this album cover, it's nearly a bit similar to the uh, kind of Marx Brothers kind of album cover. Because again, I really cannot stand the Marx Brothers, that's why I don't like the title, Gaucho. But anyway, I like the opening track, Babylon Sisters, which is an amazing song. I already referenced Babylon from the... Uh, Bridge Travel On by the Rolling Stones, which I think is good, because I like the opening in that song, by the way, Bridge Travel On. I'll actually get my, I'll get my drumsticks for you, I can play the open bit, it goes. I like the, I like the drumsticks in that one, which I think is cool. I somewhat like Hey 19 as well, and it'd be like saying Hey Tonight, which is a song title by Creedence Clearwater Revival on 1970's Pendulum. Which I think is a cool song. Glamour Profession I really like as well. The title track Gaucho is pretty good too. And even Time Out of Mind is cool too. And it's an album title by the one, the only, the magnificent Bob Dylan. Because Time Out of Mind is a magnificent Bob Dylan album. And with Out of Mind, it could be like saying Out of Sight, Out of Mind. Which Aladdin had covered for 2018's As Long As I Have You. And hopefully then in 2065, if Perry wants to do a solo career... She could have her 10th solo album out in that year as well, which is pretty cool. And then Out of Mind could be like saying Out of Time, which is a song titled by, R I mean, album titled by R.E.M. from 1991, which is pretty cool. I don't have time to reference all the ones for time, but Time on its own is an album titled by ELO. And then song titles by both Pink Floyd on 73's Dark Side of the Moon and by... Silence Family Stone on 1971's There's a Riot Going On, which is the answer to Marvin Gaye's question. Now we can somewhat have Time in a Word by Yes from 1970, and even Time in a Bottle by Jim Crochet, which I think is cool. My Rival is pretty good as well, and it could be nearly like saying My Generation, which is an album titled by AHSW from 1965 record, same name, and then For Little Mix During DNA as well, which is also a song title too. And then Third World Man is pretty good as well, and it could be like saying New World Man by Rush from 1982's Signals which I think is a good song, and then Man in the title, it's really like saying, what other ones, there was already My Old Man by Johnny Mitchell and James Taylor, and by Neil Young, and there's a couple of other ones as well, and even, or even My Man by The Eagles from 1974 is on the border, which is cool, so yeah, pretty cool album this is. So that's it, there's all the Steady Down records I had to show you, because I don't own the uh, 2000 album Two Against Nature, and then I don't own 2003's Everything Must Go. 
So I need to probably get those two. And then, as I said, I'll do Donald Fagan's box set for you. And then, sadly, of course, Walter Becker died in 2017. So it kind of felt that Donald Fagan should have really retired the CD Dan name. But I don't know. So anyway, it's the first video now I've done in a long, long time. So remember to subscribe to my channel. Leave your comment below on what you think of Steely Dan's music. And by the way, when I did the 100 subscriber special for the albums that I would, I mean, artists who I bring to jail with me, Steely Dan was my artist of choice for the letter S. That just shows how I love them so much. Because to me, they are it. To me, they're really important in my life. They're, they're important to me as Bob Dylan, Paul Stanley, Phil Collins, Luke Graham from Foreigner, AHSW, and even Little Mix as well, because I like the stuff that each one does, but of course, Donald Fagan may not be my top 10 favorite musicians, but he's way up there. He's definitely in the top 20 for sure, because Donald Fagan, I love the guy, and I can't wait to do his box set for you as well. So thank you very much, guys. Stay tuned, and bye-bye.